Hey guys, how's it going? It's the Evil Ed123 here yet again with a movie review. Now, when I was going to see the new Aladdin movie on the day it came out, me and the family were walking around a local flea market. Now, while I was there, I found Aladdin The Return of Jafar, along with Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Now, for this video, I'm just going to be talking about Aladdin the Return of Jafar, and part two will be me talking about Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Now, interesting thing about Aladdin the Return of Jafar. Now, this movie was actually meant to be released in theaters, but due to the financial failure of Rescuers Down Under, which I still don't get because Rescuers Down Under is better than the Rescuers, <laughs> uh, this movie came out on video instead of, you know, theatrical. Um... And what's really cool about this, if you think about it, this is less of a sequel and more of a backdoor pilot to the Aladdin TV series that would later come out. Now, not many people talk about this one, or they vaguely remember it. Most people remember more Aladdin and the King of Thieves, or the Aladdin TV show. Which, funny enough, if you were if you saw the Aladdin TV show and you didn't see The Return of Jafar first, people would be thrown off like, about why Iago's with them, why is the genie back? Well, that's why you really need to watch, you know, Aladdin the Return of Jafar. Now, I have feelings about this. As a kid, I remember watching this over and over again, along with Aladdin. And, you know, when Aladdin the King of Thieves came out, I would watch that on repeat as well. Now, as a kid, I really enjoyed this. And recently, not too long ago, I actually just finished watching this. Um, and... I still have a sense of nostalgia for this, but it does have some of its problems. Um, one in particular, because even as a kid I noticed this, um, at the time Robin Williams had a disagreement with Disney because of the first Aladdin movie. They had some kind of, you know, uh, issue during the time, but then that was later resolved when Aladdin the King of Thieves came out, and I think Bicentennial Man. So, G so Robin Williams does not come back to voice the genie in this. Instead, it's Dan Castellanelli, who's best known for voicing Homer Simpson from, of course, The Simpsons. Now, his performance in this, Dan Castellanelli, it's good. It's not the same. It's almost like you're watching a different genie entirely, which is okay. I mean, some of the jokes that the, the genie does in this is pretty funny. And this does have songs, uh, much like the original Aladdin movie, but... Most of them aren't particularly memorable. The only two songs I really enjoyed from this movie is Genie's song, Nothing in the World Quite Like a Friend, and Jafar's song. That's right, Jafar has a villain song in this. Unlike in the first Disney movie, he never really had a villain song. He did do the reprise of Prince Ali, but I never really saw that as a villain song. It just... And that, that was the thing. When they were making the original Aladdin movie, they came up with a couple different songs for Jafar, uh, but during the early stages, and then after a while they thought, eh, let's scrap this. They had the song Why Me and Humiliate the Boy, which I did like Humiliate the Boy, but eh, do what you can. So Only Second Rate is my absolute favorite villain song in this, and Jafar is pretty badass in this, much like in the original Disney movie, because he's now all-powerful, but still has limitations because of the restrictions of the lamp. And this introduces some characters that would later be in the Aladdin TV show itself, including the, um, every now and then meddlesome uh, thief Abysmal, voiced by Jason Alexander, who some of you best know for his roles in Seinfeld and um, other TV shows and movies. He, he does a pretty good job in this. He's pretty funny. He's the one that I remember laughing the most just because of just how dumb the character was. Uh, now... The voices that do return in this is, of course, the voice of Jafar, he's back. The voice of Aladdin's back. The voice of Jasmine's back. Although the voice of the Sultan is not the same actor. For whatever reason, he didn't come back to do this movie or Aladdin and the King of Thieves or even the TV series. I don't know why exactly that was the case. And this DVD is actually hard to come by. Uh, this was... Um, for those of you who don't know, sometimes Disney would release, you know, movies as a limited thing, then they would put them back in the vault, and then re-release them. 
Uh, so this DVD, for a while, it was pretty expensive. It was pretty expensive because it was one of those rare out-of-print movies. Um, I'm not sure if that's the same now as it once was. But during the time when the special... I, I can't remember what. I think it was the anniversary of Aladdin, not, not the uh, big diamond edition that they have now. I can't remember, but it was some special thing that they released this movie along with Aladdin and King of Thieves as a double pack. Uh, and this would be the first time that these movies, Return of Jafar and The King of Thieves, would be available on DVD, because for the longest time they were just on video. And I think Aladdin was on DVD at the time, but they never put these out on DVD until back in, I think, 2005. And for the most part, this movie is still good. It's nowhere near as great as the first one. But... You know, it's still pretty fun to watch. I, I had a lot of fun watching this again. I was reminded of when I was a kid, and I would pop the video in and, you know, watch it over and over again. Um, one of the things I love still from this movie is the uh, flying batwing horses that show up. They were pretty cool, and I still think their design is awesome. And even Jafar's design as, you know, the genie was pretty cool. It, I still pretty neat. Um... And, yeah, um, all in all, I still think it's a decent watch. Here's the deal. If you're watching this expecting, you know, a great sequel, it's not that, but it's a good follow-up and also a good pilot to the TV series because this ends with Aladdin and Jasmine saying, you know what, I want to explore the world out there. There's so much to see. And that's how the movie ends. And you, for those of you who hadn't seen the series, you go like, well, what does that mean? And then, you know, the series came out, you watched it, there we go. Um, As I was saying, I wish the series was available on DVD, but unfortunately it's not the case. So all in all, Aladdin The Return of Jafar is a great watch. Very fun. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, if you guys can find a copy of this, you know, get it. Um, I was lucky enough to find this along with the other, along with King of Thieves for $2. Although at the uh, flea market, the table had set up three DVDs for 5 bucks. So, I picked this up, I picked up Aladdin and the King of Thieves, and I also picked up another great Disney movie that most people don't talk about, and that's Atlantis, The Lost uh, Empire. This movie is awesome. I don't care what anybody says. This is a really fun movie, too. Um, I'll probably do a review on this one uh, sometime soon. But yeah, that's my review for Aladdin The Return of Jafar, and stay tuned when I do the review for Aladdin and the King of Thieves.